So first of all, you should go to python.org, which is the official website of Python, and then you should click on this downloads, and then a page like this will be open. So you should scroll down, and here you can see you're looking for a specific release. And here, as you can see, the latest version of Python among these versions is 3.10.7. So you should click on it. And then a page like this will be open. So you should scroll down. And here you can see different files. So because I have a 64-bit Windows, so I need to install this file. So I click on this file in order to download it. And you can see it is downloading the file. So as you can see, here is the file which we have downloaded. So I should right click on it. And then I should click on run as administrator. And in this step, I should click on this add Python 3.10 to path, which is a very, very important step. So remember to check this one. And I want to customize the installation. And here I should press next. And I want to choose another install location. And remember that the install location of Python is very important because there is a file called interpreter in this path, which you are going to specify, which is a very, very important file. So you need to know the install location. So for example, suppose that I want to install my Python in this path in my computer. So this is a very important path. So remember to copy this path because we need it later and then press on install and you should wait for the installation process. So as you can see, the setup was successful. So I press close. And now in order to verify that we have installed Python correctly in the start of Windows, you should simply search for IDLE. Remember that it has L, so it is IDLE, not IDE. So it is IDLE. So click on it. And here we can see here is the Python IDLE. So you can start coding. So for example, I want to print something. I want to print, for example, hello. And I press enter. And you can see here is the result. And also I can simply type five times eight and etc. So that's it. And also, for example, if you want to change the font size, we should go to options, configure IDLE. And for example, I want to change the font size to 14 or let's say, for example, 10. And I should press OK. So you can see here's the Python IDLE. So this space is called the shell space. So as you can see, this is the shell of IDLE, but also you can click on file and then new file. And here you can start coding. So you can see here is the code which I have typed here. And then I should save this Python file. So I should click on file and then save. And for example, I want to name my code, code 01, and I should press save. So you can see here is the path of my file, which I have saved. So now in order to run this file, I should click on run and run module. And you can see here is the result. So let's close these. And now in order to open the command window, so you should press the Windows and R key on your keyboard. And here we can see this window. Here you should simply type CMD, it stands for command, and you should press OK. And here is the command window. So here you can simply type Python space dash dash version. And here you can see the Python version which we have installed. So now once again, I simply type Python and I press enter. And you can see here, I can start coding as well. So for let's print something, let's print five times eight. And you can see here is the result, five plus nine. And you can see here is the result. So as you can see, this is similar to Python shell. But now let's go to the installation folder. So I paste the installation folder, which I have copied in this step, which you can see on the screen. So I press OK. And here you can see here is the install location. And in this folder, you can see that there are different files. And one of them, which is very important, is this file, python.exe. And remember that if you don't see these extensions, you should go to view. And here you should check file name extensions. Because if you don't check it, you, can, you can't see these extensions. But if you check it, you can see these extensions as well. So python.exe is the Python interpreter, which is a very, very important file. For example, if you want to install PyCharm, you need to know the path of this Python interpreter. So this Python interpreter is a very, very important file. So here we can see a side-by-side -side comparison of PyCharm and Python IDLE. And as you can see, the auto completion and suggestions of IDLE is very bad, but the suggestions and auto completion of PyCharm 
is very good. And to my opinion, PyCharm is one of the best IDEs for Python programming language, which is my favorite. So in order to download the PyCharm, first of all, in the Google, you should simply type PyCharm download. And you can see that the first link is from the JetBrains company, which is the company of PyCharm. So you should click on it. And here you can see that the latest version is this. So, and, and here you can see that we have two versions, the professional version and the community version. The community version is free. So you want to install that. So click on this and you should wait for the download prompt. And now you can see I'm downloading the PyCharm. So now you can see the PyCharm has been downloaded. So let's open it. And now let's right click on it. And you should click on run as administrator. So here we should press next and here is the install location of PyCharm, which is not that important. So I press next and here I don't want to check none of these, but for example, if you want to create a desktop shortcut, you can check this one. And if you want to open all the Python files, that .py is the extension of Python files. So if you want to open all the Python files with PyCharm, you can check this one as well, but I don't want to check none of these. So I press next and here I press install and I should wait for the installation process. And here I want to run PyCharm after pressing finish. So I check this one and I press finish. And here I don't want to import anything. So I click on this and I press OK. And here I want to create a new project, so I click on this. And here is uh, the location of my project, and this is the name of my project. So for example, I want to name my project, let's say, called YouTube. So that's it. And here I click on this, previously configured interpreter. And here I want to add an interpreter. And also I want to add a local interpreter. I mean, an interpreter which is in my computer, so I click on it. And in this window, I click the existing environment and I, cl and I click on this three dots. And here we should specify the location of Python interpreter. So if you remember, we have installed Python in this folder and you can see that here is the Python interpreter. So we need this path. So let's copy the path of this folder and let's go to PyCharm because we need this path. And here let's paste that path so that's it and here we can see we have a python.exe file which is the python interpreter so i click on it and i press ok and here once again i press ok and i don't want pycharm to create any welcome script and etc so i uncheck this one and i press the create button and here let's maximize the pycharm and you can see it is indexing and you can see here is a prompt. So let's click on more and don't show again because we don't want to show that anymore. And here we can see that it says Windows Defender might impact performance and it suggests us to exclude these directories. So I want to do so. So I click on it and I want to configure all the stuff automatically. So I click on this one. And here we should wait for these indexing processes. But until then, let's talk about some stuff. For example, if you want to change the theme of PyCharm, you should go to File, then Settings. And here we can see that there are different sections in PyCharm. So we can see one of those sections is the Appearance and Behavior. And you can see one of the subsections is Appearance. So click on it. And here you can see you can change the theme. So if you want to change that to Windows 10 Lite, you can choose that and you can press OK. And if you want to restore that, you can go to File Settings. And once again, you can change that. And if you, if you press OK, you can see the theme has been changed. So now let's talk about how to create a Python file. So as you can see, this is the name of our project, YouTube, and this folder is also called YouTube, which is the name of our project. So right click on it. And here you should simply click on new and a Python file. And you should name that whatever you want. So for example, I want to name it code 01 and I press enter. And you can see here is the Python file, which we have created. But you can see that the font size is very small. So let's change the font size. So let's go to File, then Settings. And here, let's go to the Editor section and the Font subsection. And here, for example, I want to change the font size to 30. And I press OK. 
and you can see the font has increased and also I want to change I want to be able to change the font size with control plus mouse wheel which is my favorite so if I want to do so I can go to file then settings and here I simply search for mouse wheel here and you can see the first option is a change font size with control plus mouse wheel so I want to check that and I press OK and you can see I can change the font size using control plus mouse will and also remember that if you click on this panel this project panel it will be closed and once again if you click on it it will be open so if you click on it it will be closed and if you click on it again it will be opened so that's it we are waiting for these processes and now let's talk about how we can run a Python file in PyCharm. So for example, here we can see that I have created a Python file here. And you can see I've typed print 5 times 8. And I want to print uh, this statement and I want to run this code. In order to do so, I should right click in the middle of the editor. And I should click on this run code 01. And remember code 01 is the name of our code. You can see that the name of our code is code 01. So if I click on it. So you can see the output is this and you can see here is a tab code 01 which is which it says that this is the output of code 01. So let's minimize this and here we can see that the PyCharm has different tabs and one of those tabs is the run tab which the output of the running process is in this tab. So let's minimize it again. And now let's create another Python file. So in order to do so let's right click on this and new Python file. I want to name that code 02. And here let's simply type print 2 times 10. And now in order to run this code, I right click on it. I right click in the middle of the editor and I press run code 02, which is the name of our code. So we can see here is the output. So remember that you can run the code using this icon as well. But remember that if you press this icon, it is going to run this code, which you can see its name here. So for example, you can see that now I'm in the code 01 tab. But if I press this icon, it is going to run this code, which is code 02. So let's click on it. And you can see here is the output of code 02, not code 01. Why? Because if you press this icon, it is going to run the code which its name is here. So if you want to change that, you can simply click on this and you can change that to code 01. And if you press this, you can see here is the output of code 01. But remember that in this list, there are the codes which have recently run. For example, if you create another Python file, let's click on it. Let's right click on the this folder and let's click a new Python file and let's name that code 03. And now if I go to this list, you can't see the code 03 because it hasn't been run recently. So this list includes uh, the files which have recently run so code 03 hasn't been recently run so for example here let's print something let's print 10 times 3 and let's right click in the middle of the editor and let's run code 03 and once let's minimize this and once again if i go to this list you can see code 03 because now it has been recently run so it is in this list and i can choose that and i can use this icon as well so let's minimize this. And also it is very obvious that you can change the order of these tabs. For example, I want to change the order of this. And also you can close all of these tabs as well. And you can open it as well. So that's it. And maybe you ask, where are the Python files in my computer? So in order to open the location of these files, so you should right click on one of these files and you should open that in Explorer. And here we can see that we are in this folder, in the YouTube folder, which is the name of our project. And here we have three codes. But now let's talk about how to install a package in PyCharm. In order to do so, for example, suppose that I want to install the NumPy package, which is one of the most widely used and most well-known packages in Python programming language. So in order to do so, I should open the terminal tab. So here we can see PyCharm has a tab called terminal. So I want to open that and here, I simply type pip and pip is the Python package manager in order to install and uninstall packages and other stuff. So I simply use pip and I should put a space and then I simply type install and again a space and the name of package which is numpy and I should press 
enter and remember that it should have internet connection first of all it is going to download the numpy package and then it is going to install that so now you can see the numpy package has been downloaded and now it is installing the numpy package so you can see it has successfully installed numpy and this is the version of the numpy which has been installed so let's minimize uh, the terminal and let's close this so that's it and remember that you should wait for these indexing processes in order to start coding but you don't need to wait for other processes but the indexing processes are important and you should wait for them now i really suggest you to watch this video which is on the screen now